welcome from wherever you join me today. It's me again, Jim Black from the Three Hats Stage Media Channel, trying to bring entertaining content media to all the world's stages. This is a pause for thought edition where I review one of my favourite movies and see what messages we can take from it and how we could use those insights into today's busy lives. All the movies come from a screenplay or book, have a great cast and a fantastic soundtrack. And as you can see from the light box just to my side, today's movie is no exception. It's Little Miss Sunshine from 2006. The screenplay is by Michael Arndt and there's a great cast. You've got Toni Collette. She plays Cheryl Hoover and she's the mum and you'll recognise her from things such as About a Boy, one of my previous reviews, Sixth Sense, Muriel's Wedding and something we found on a streaming service not long ago called Unbelievable, which I suggest you watch. There's Greg Kinnear. He plays Richard, the father. He's been in things such as House of Cards, Rake, and As Good As It Gets. There's Paul Dano. He plays Dwayne, and he's the son of Cheryl. You might know him from 12 Years a Slave and the television series War and Peace. Then there's Abigail Breslin, and she's Olive. And yes, she's Little Miss Sunshine. And you might know her from Scream Queens, as well as, in 1999, she was a little girl in a Toys R Us advert. There's Alan Arkin, he plays Grandpa, and he's been acting since 1957, and he's still going today. Steve Carell, he plays Frank, and he's the brother of Cheryl. You'll know him from many things, such as Anchorman, The Office, Watching Ellie, and my favourite character, although he's not actually in it because it's a cartoon, he's Gru in The Minions. He's also working on a new thing that he's written called Space Force. He's also going to act in it and it's out soon, so watch out for that. So I ask, is it right that you just want everybody to pretend to be normal sometimes? And can a dysfunctional family really do that? Let's get into this review and find out. What's your version of dysfunctional and functional for that matter? It's probably different to mine. You know, what I do and how I act, it might be completely dysfunctional for you. And your functionality may be the same for me. We're all different, we all have different ideas, and we learn from different experiences. There isn't one type of person, there's many types. If it was a work environment, it's organised and planned, and each job has a role. And if you do those roles, well, the job would be done. In life, you know, families and things like that, it's a little bit different. There's so many different characters within your world. How do you pull them all together? And do you? It's not always easy. The movie follows Cheryl. She has a dysfunctional family. She's got to take them on a road trip across America so they can go to the competition so little Olive can perform there. But with all their issues and problems, can she actually do it? Let's get into the plot and find out. This is another one of those favourite movies of mine. It's listed as a feel-good movie that you must see. It deals with some interesting issues, but we'll look at those as we move through the review. It starts at the hospital where Cheryl, the mother of the family, is picking up her brother, Frank. Frank's got some issues around depression and anxiety and it sent him over the edge because his boyfriend has gone off with somebody else so he's tried to take his own life. Back at home there's Richard, he's the husband of Cheryl and he's a life coach but he's failing fast. He's invented a nine point plan and he's written a book. He wants to do seminars, conferences and things like that and he firmly believes that if you listen and actually do those nine points in his plan, life will be so much better. But we know life isn't quite like that. It can't be written down and it can't be performed like that. There's Grandpa. He's the father of Richard. He lives with them because all the retirement homes that he's ever been in have asked him to leave because he's got a dependency on drugs and he's also trying to sell them to the rest of the residents. Dwayne, the 15-year-old son of Cheryl, 
from another marriage. He wants to be a pilot. He's taken a vow of silence based on the teachings of Henrik Nietzsche. And then there's Olive. She is Little Miss Sunshine. And all she wants to do is be a happy little girl. Grandpa tells her how wonderful she is all the time, as most grandpas will. And he said that she should enter the Little Miss Sunshine pageant, which takes place across the other side of America, which she does. During dinner, the phone rings. There's a message, and yes, she's been accepted to take part in that very pageant. The problem is, how will they get there? Because they've got no money, so one of them can't just fly off with her because it's too expensive. So they decide that it's not going to happen. But then, under some pressure, they decide that they're going to take a road trip in the family camper van, which is a VW T2 for all those that want to know. Can Cheryl get them all into the camper van, this dysfunctional family, and can she keep them all in one piece without falling out on this whole journey? We then follow the journey and we see it at different stages on the way to the pageant. The clutch goes in the camper van and the guy at the gas station says that if you bump start it, which is basically pushing it along the road with lots of people, putting it in gear, third gear he suggests, and keeping it that way, it'll keep going. This is quite a funny scene at different times when they're all pushing it along and because it's got to be kept going, they've all got to jump in the side and try and get on without falling out. On the journey, they stay at a motel. Three separate rooms, Frank and Dwayne, Richard and Cheryl, and Grandpa and Olive. The next morning, Olive tries to wake up Mum and Dad. She says that Grandpa won't wake. And this is a sad part of the movie, because Grandpa has passed away in the middle of the night. They have to go to the hospital with him to try and find out what happened. And it's a drug overdose, which is sad, because it didn't need to happen. At the hospital, there's some great scenes with the doctors and also with the group of the family itself. They leave the hospital with Grandpa. I know I said he's passed away, but because of state laws, they need him to die in a different state. So they get him in the camper van, wrap him up and take him with them. But you've got to watch it to know the context that that is all set. Not long after they've gone, there's a police officer on a motorbike pulls them over. And this is where the line comes in, can everybody pretend to be normal? Obviously, relating to the fact that they're all not. They get away with it and off they go. As we head on through the journey, we find out that Dwayne is colorblind. Frank spots it and he tells Dwayne, even though he's still got a vow of silence, about it. He also tells him that he can't be a pilot because as colorblind people know, there's certain things you can't do. This upsets Dwayne tremendously. He breaks his vow of silence, makes them all pull over, and there's some great scenes here of him shouting, almost crying, everybody getting upset, and the competition still beckoning in the distance. Will they get back in? Well, yes, they do, because Cheryl, she's the mum, and she's great at bringing everybody back together. She calms the situation down, tells everybody that she'll work it all out, and off they go to the pageant. Uncle Frank and Dwayne start to form a bond because although Frank has got his own issues, he knows that Dwayne has got some issues and he wants to help him with them. They make the pageant by the skin of their teeth. In fact, they're let in even though it's just after time. And this is where we see the normal American pageant for this type of event where they act and sing and dance and all try and be something that they're not. Apart from Olive, that is but the spoiler alarms are going off and I can't tell you any more because it really will ruin the end of the film. Now, it does sound like I've given a terrible review, but I really haven't because all those things happen in that particular order. It's just life at the end of the day. Will it all work out for them? Again, you're gonna to have to watch the movie to find out. Look at the family around you. See what you've got. Is it dysfunctional? I don't think so. It's just lots of individuals trying to do their own thing. Remember, don't be too hard on people. Always be kind and always be friendly. The trivia in this movie is really good. Did you know, for example, that 40 minutes on screen, Alan Arkin, grandpa I'm talking about, he won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar at 2006. That's not bad for a short bit of work, is it? And you should remember 
that it's what you do with those minutes that's important. Talking about the Oscars, Abigail Breslin was also up for Best Supporting Actress. She didn't win because Jennifer Hudson won it for Dreamgirls, but at least she was nominated. Five VW T2s were used in the making of this movie. And did you know that Paul Dano, who plays Dwayne, was actually 22 when the movie was made and he's playing a 15 year old. He's only 12 years younger than Tony Collette. So in real life, that would have been difficult for him to be the son of her, if you know what I mean. But luckily for the movies, it works. The final bit of trivia I have for you today is that Michael Arndt used to be the personal assistant of Matthew Broderick. He decided to leave because he wanted to write the screenplay for Little Miss Sunshine. And luckily for him, he did. Because as you know, there's a Best Supporting Actress nomination, a Best Supporting Actor winner, and yes, the Best Screenplay went to him. All in 2006. What a great year. Well done, Michael. The music on this movie is really good. You've got Rick James, you've got Julie Griffin, you've got Paulson Conway Twitty. And the movie plays out with Devochka until the end of time. I suggest you watch it on a YouTube channel near you soon. I hope you've enjoyed this movie review. If you want to know where my thoughts and inspirations come from, please click on the links in the bio below and they'll take you for a closer look. If you want to subscribe to the channel and join our community, then please hit the button. And if you want to know when the next one's uploaded, strike that bell. Comments are always welcome and I'll do my best to get back to you as and when I can. I've been Jim Black for the Three Hats Stage Media channel for this edition of Pause for Thought. See you again soon.